We are live with Oliver and Justin from AdLeaks. Uh, let me get live in the groups. I think it automatically go live. There we go. And we are going to be live, Oliver, just so you know, in AdLeaks Gold, Platinum, and Facebook ad buyers. Perfect. Sounds good to me. And we are going to cover today, we're going to be going over CRO. Um, Let's kind of start out, Oliver. Let's give a little background into kind of you. And just so everybody knows, Oliver is Tim Bird's basically main go to and of our AdLeaks community. Um, he's one of our partners that we have vetted and used uh, extensively on a lot of things. And he is the one that we recommend for all design, um, website builds, that kind of stuff. So I'll kind of let Oliver kind of jump in, chat a little bit about uh, him and his uh, landing page guys, and then we'll kind of go from there while I get some of the questions pulled up from the community and we kind of dive in, into some CRO. Cool, perfect. Thanks for the intro, um, Justin. Really appreciate that. And yeah, you're, you're right in saying that um, you know Tim has used us for years. In fact, Tim was our first ever client some six, seven years ago, which is wow. uh, it's pretty cool. So yeah, he um, he actually kind of initiated us to move into the CRO space. Um, we weren't learned a lot with him probably six, seven years ago, um, and we've build, been building this agency ever since. So we are now skip forward six or sort of six, seven years. Um, we've established ourselves as the kind of conversion rate experts and landing page experts in the space. Um, we currently develop between fifty and hundred projects per month, whether that's uh, a landing page, a store a lead gen uh, lander, an advertorial, a pre-sale. Um, but what sets us aside from other design development agencies, uh, and it's a little bit cliche, but I always say it, is that any design development agency can make something look good. What we do differently is we focus on conversions. So that's kind of all we care about. So we're now a team of uh, th between 30 and 40 people. Um, we have eight people internally here in, in England and the UK, uh, and then we have an amazing team all around the world uh, who work for us full time, and yeah, like I say, we're knocking out between 50 and 100 projects per month right now. And uh, Did you say, yeah, 30 or 30 to 40 or 13 to 14? 30 to 14. Oh, wow, okay, yeah, awesome. Uh, made up of kind of designers, developers, CRO experts. Um, and yeah, we, we're uh, yeah, we're super excited to be on this call. Hopefully, we can have some value. And, and as you said, we've already we already are helping hundreds um, of ad leaks uh, and Facebook ad buyers uh, members build their, their pages and funnels, but um, we'd love to offer some, some value on this call and um, yeah, hopefully help some more in the future. Absolutely. Um, so I, I know Tim has ran a lot of like uh, top landing pages with you guys and you guys have like kind of pushed that out there and those are still being used in a lot of our projects that we work on um, together. Can you kind of yes. elaborate on kind of what, what makes those pages so well. And obviously there's a lot of, and I know people can, you know, obviously get them from you or whatever. Um, what makes those pages like so much better? I mean, I know that there's obviously a lot of spend behind them and a lot of traffic. Is that kind of what you have based all of your, you know, your CRO methodologies or how did you kind of get? Yeah, you know, yeah absolutely. It's a great question. And, um, you know, one thing I want to make, make clear before we kind of really get into the depths of things is, People can use us, feel free to reach out to us, but what I'd love to do on this on this uh, webinar is, is kind of give some little value tips that anyone can just uh, adapt their page or add to their page without spending money with us because it's not all about going there and you know c coming to us and, and spending money on getting some new projects, although I'd, you know, we'd love to work with you, you guys, but hopefully there's some takeaways on this that people can just implement on their pages. One or two little changes can often make a great uh, difference. So hopefully we can do that. So yeah, great question. Basically, um, we have uh, something internally that we call our blueprint, and it's something that we've been working on um, for five, six years. It's something that we uh, share with people at Tim's Mastermind in London we've done for the last three years. Um, and it's basically an internal blueprint that we've built up based on key factors that affect conversion rates. Mm -hmm. Now, last time we checked, there's kind of over 40 points, but there's kind of 10 to 20 really, really, really important things that can have a huge, huge difference. If, for example, you just do one of them, um, it's going to increase your, it should increase your conversion rates. But if you do multiple of these things and really focus on them, 
um, it, it's going to take your landing page way up in conversion rates. And it's often the step that people forget about. I mean, we see it in ad leaks all the time, Facebook ad buys, they're amazing, incredible groups. Tim and you guys have built incredible content, incredible groups, but most of the talk, it's fair to say, is probably about traffic. It's about ads, scaling, um, how can we how can we scale this? How can we get cheaper ad spend? When when a lot of people forget about the final piece, and I'm here to tell you, and obviously I'm very biased, but for me, that's the most important piece of the puzzle. It's that landing page, it's that funnel, it's mm -hmm. that page they actually land on once you've spent your money, that you can actually make a huge, huge difference from doing very small kind of little tweaks. And, and actually, you know, you shouldn't, it's great to, to focus on cheaper ad spend and, and, and uh, scaling your ads, but you can actually make the same results, if not better, by making some tweaks on your landing page and simply getting a better conversion rate. Right. I know a lot of people even, you know, like you talk, talk traffic and tweaks on the, obviously on the landing page side, which I want us to focus more on that. But a lot of it is sure. making tweaks on the, a big portion of it as well is making tweaks on the ad buying, ad buying side. Because if you're not sending quality traffic that have intention right. to convert, your conversion rate is just going to be, you know, ultimate shit. So, you know, you don't want to be throwing shit at the wall. You want to make sure that the traffic you are sending are, are opt in to buy and that your ad buying strategy is, just as good as the CRO strategy we're going to cover because you can make all the, the landing page tweaks you want, but if your ad buying game isn't up to par either, you know, you're, you're going to really struggle on the CRO side. Um, I, I totally agree. I think it fits hand in hand, but often yeah. we're the side that people forget about. Yeah, for sure. hundred um, percent. So uh, what you said, there's about 20 or so. It would be awesome if like you guys have like a 20 best practice, like PDF that we can drop. In the comments yeah absolutely we, we've got um you know I was, I was in barcelona with tim at affiliate world and we we did a talk there and um that's uh that talk was about ecom so it's the top 10 um top 10 kind of relevant uh optimization tips that you can do on your ecom landers to, to boost your sure. conversion rates so i can send you that um we've actually got the blueprint as well that we can send you so it's not a problem at all sure let's let's kind Hopefully of dive cover in. a few as well yeah let's go through let's go through them all i mean i have about I uh, have a Google Ads course at one, so I got to jump off in about 45 minutes, but we got plenty of time and we have some questions too from um, the Ad Leagues Platinum community. So let's kind of dive in and let's just start with number one, obviously the biggest one, and let's just go down the list and let's uh, see how many we can bang through. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I don't have the, the blueprint in front of me, but I'm happy to share um, you know, our kind of top um, optimization tips that, that we feel mm -hmm. uh, anyone can have, kind of come implement. And if, like I said, if you do one of these things, you're going to see an increase in, in conversion rates. If you're sitting to this and listening to this on a replay or live, and you can do you know a set of several of these things, then you're really going to see an increase. So it's exciting. Um, so, number one, first and foremost, um, you've probably heard it spoken about a lot, but again, a lot of people don't do it. But page speed optimization is is crucial. Um, yeah. It's key. How how do we test that? We go to tools.pingdom.com um, or GT Metrics. Uh, Google Page Insights, another great site. They're all free resources. Um, so just go ahead, put your URL in, your landing page URL, your store URL, wherever you're sending your traffic, your product page, um, and it's going to spit out results based on your uh, your page of how um, it, how fast your page loads, basically. So it's going to look at things like uh, caches, um, uh, your your images first and foremost. Are your images optimized? Are your videos optimized? Um, are things being loaded correctly? Um, and then there's going to get results and you're going to see like a result that will say, you know, this isn't right, this can be improved, this can be improved. And that's something very, very simply that you can then take to your developer if you've got one. Um, go on to upwork.com um, for $100, someone can improve your page feed and you're going to see a dramatic increase in conversion rates based on page feed. There's a stat that says, Every one second uh, decrease in page speed, you're going to say see between a seven and ten percent increase in conversion rates. So yep. for every one second your site is loading quicker, you're going to see a huge, huge uplift. Whether that's add to carts, whether that's a lead gen um, opt in, whether that's a click through, um, it, it doesn't matter. Especially when you're doing paid traffic and paid traffic at volume and scale. Uh, page speed is absolutely crucial. I know Google did a big study on that, and that's pretty much the metric that I was going to quote as well. So I know that there's a lot of there's a lot of info and data out there. I think some of the questions, and this goes kind of around uh, we'll get into some of the questions. I had one 
kind of comment and I'll let you kind of speak to this, but obviously there's a difference uh, between Pingdom and GT metrics um, that I'm very familiar with. Just like to hear your take on it. GT metrics, in my experience, overinflates page speed times because it's full, uh, full code, full code load versus Absolutely. actual full, uh, you know, visitor load. So just people out there that are using GT metrics, be very mindful of that. That that page speed number you see is not going to be a true, uh, true metric. What, what GT metrics does quite well is the reporting, but yeah. I totally agree with you. Um, GT metrics was our go-to. Um, and we still use it for several reasons. The reporting is very good, um, but Pingdom is, is brilliant. So tools.pingdom.com mm -hmm. um, is really good. That will give you, like you kind of said, that will give you the actual load speed of, of everything rendering from when someone visits. But the, the other really good one is Google Insights because it will give you the mobile breakdown as well. And we've had cases whereby clients have come to us and they've been like, you know, my load speed is fine. It's great. And, and I'm not over, um, dramatizing this, this is actually factual, but people have come to us and been like, look, my low speed, my, my page loads in like two seconds. And we'll put it into page speed insights on Google and we'll look at mobile and your mobile is loading at like 19 seconds for some reason. They're driving mobile traffic and they've just focused on, say, for example, the desktop results. Um, so that's that's a really, really good tool to use as well. Um, no free tools. Is page in speed insights, is that still using? 3G connection, or did they switch that? I know it was. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Let me check. Not entirely sure. Um, but that, yeah, they, they all spit out great uh, reports that you can then, like I say, take to a developer. Or honestly, yeah. like there's no point coming to us just to improve your page speed. I mean, we can do it, but it's not really something we have a minimum spend and kind of stuff like that. But just go to upwork.com. Yeah. Sign up, look for a developer, any any uh, back-end or front-end developer, if you're just doing HTML, can, can pretty much take the report that they give you, uh, increase your page speed for $100, um, and I guarantee you will see uplifting conversion rates. Yeah, I know the, the Pingdom is by far like the best, but they charge for it now. They can't even... Uh, the tool, tools.pingdom doesn't, doesn't charge us for free. Uh, basic oh. reporting is free. Yeah, if you go to tools.pingdom.com and put in your URL, it's, it's free. Isn't it for only like... But for those that are agency owners, like you can only use it, I think like, isn't it like once? I mean, I, I use it daily and it's, it's, really? it seems to be free, yeah. Okay, I thought they were charging for it. Awesome. They, they, do, they do upsell. Uh, if you go through the .com, um, they, they will say it's a paid tool, but if you just go to tools.pingdom.com, um, cool. that one is, you know, I checked some today and it's free, so yeah, it should be fun. Sweet. Um, the big thing that I know a lot of people in here obviously use Shopify, mm. and Shopify and PageSpeed, are not, not they don't right. <laughs> yeah. the worst ever. Um, how do you guys combat that? Because the big thing about Shopify and the problem is obviously, you know, everyone's going to say Turbo is the fastest theme, which um, I think is true. The issue with Shopify is app and API callouts. Those apps, every single app you install, exactly. blows the fudge down out of your website. And the, trouble, the trouble is it's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because people think they're going to install these apps to increase conversion rates, but what they don't see is the page feed actually goes up and that's going to have a damaging effect. So like, yeah. if, if you want my honest opinion, like Shopify is amazing. If you if you are determined to run traffic to, say for example, and this is a completely different conversation I'd actually like to get into because I think it's quite important, especially uh, now that everyone's doing econ, but if you want to drive traffic to uh, a Shopify store, for example, a product page, if you're if you're going to do it, then you need to keep it simple and just strip out all these apps just to focus on your page feed. You'll actually see better results with a, a basic kind of, uh, you know, no app uh, because of the page feed versus having all these conversion rate apps and social proof apps and stuff. Um, they're actually damaging to your conversion rates because page feed yeah. is so important. But the bigger picture is you shouldn't actually be driving, in my opinion, and our opinion from what we've seen with our clients, um, you shouldn't be driving traffic to product pages or Shopify stores. Um, the way that we're getting results for our clients right now, and the way that hopefully everyone's moving with our help is to build dedicated sales pages outside of Shopify. They can be integrated in Shopify if you want, so you can dynamically edit them on the back end. I get that some people like that and some people don't like to have a separate server because obviously Shopify hosts your pages, but the best results you'll get is building dedicated sales pages for your products outside of Shopify on a separate server and then sending people straight to the checkout. Yep. So skipping the cart, skipping the product page, take everything out that actually, you know, Shopify is great for the, the kind of processing side of things, 
but you build these dedicated direct response, aggressive sales pages, kind of like back in a couple of years ago when everyone was driving traffic at these kind of sales funnels. Um, very similar, but more uh, branded aggressive sales pages straight to the Shopify checkout. So you add your buy buttons, they go straight to the checkout, they bypass the whole store, your product pages. Of course, you need those stores and product pages for continuity, for people to come back, for trust, for customer care, for repeat business. But when you're doing paid traffic and every click counts, sales page straight to checkout. The other big thing too is people keep in mind, this is just a quick tip. And I think uh, my boy Dino covers this in AdLeaks Platinum, but every time on Shopify, because I know a lot of our users are a lot of more Shopify is every time you guys sure. do install an app to test something it injects code into your theme. And when you delete that app, it doesn't delete the code and the call outs actually still stay there and it still calls out. So if you're like a person who likes to, um, and then we have a lot of clients like this that just install apps and test them and end up deleting them. You're actually just keep layering code after code after code into your theme. Great, and then nice. the all outs, a lot of them still stay there. It depends on the app, but you actually have to manually go in and remove them. So That's there is really a, there is a, a process of actually, you know, uh, before you install a, a theme, like one real quick tip is to create a backup of the theme um, and label it like, you know, prior to make sure you label things appropriately, but back it up, then install the theme into the new thing and test it. And then if you like it, um, delete the backup and, and keep that one as your thing. Otherwise, you know, especially when you're starting a new store, you can just really screw your themes up really, really bad with Shopify. Um, and I, I, I would, I would be interested to see like not on a landing page, but just on like a Shopify site. Like, what are you guys seeing? What do you guys see for like Shopify page speeds? Like four to five seconds? Yeah, yeah. if not, more, if not more, to be honest with you. Um, some of these, oh, yeah. yeah, some of these themes, like we'll, we'll get clients come to us, and they'll be like twelve seconds, honestly. Um, yep. And that, that's why it is damaging your conversion rates. Um, and that's why you are far better. Either building um, a new, you know, based on the back of the theme, but you're still building a new page on the Shopify store that's just mm -hmm. focused on this product so we can optimize all the image features. We have the full control. Because on product pages, you don't have full, full control, as we know. Um, or just going fully static. I mean, there's loads of conversations on, on the groups, on ad leaks, on Facebook advertising and stuff at the moment. And it, it, it's it's so true. If you're spending a good amount of money on media and you're taking this seriously, honestly, like it's the same with um, it's the same with landing page builders, tools, uh, click funnels, unmatched, whatever. Um, we can go into that if you want as well. But if you want my black and white answer, you'll get the best results going straight back to HTML, CSS, keeping everything raw, lean as possible, quick, fast loading on a quick server. And then go into your, your checkout, bypass that product page and store altogether, and you'll get far better results. And I think for people that have like a proven product and a, or a proven store, and they're doing you know six figures a month, and they're if they're not dealing with Facebook's follow uh, absolutely <laughs> volatility, and you have actual proven true traffic and all of that, then that's where this you know moving to that's the next step, right? A full custom type thing would be very very beneficial so. yeah we, we always say that to clients who have stores like that who come to us we say like well what's your top um performing product let's just take that one product for starters build a dedicated page for it and, and see where we go from there and and you know, nine times out of ten we never like try and sell our, our product anyway hopefully touch what it sells itself but like nine times out of ten people then come back to us and like oh, shit, we need to build these for all our products yeah right um what are some of like the top things that you can do on sh on not only Shopify product pages but all product pages to kind of increase add to cart? Yeah, so so again, I wouldn't recommend sending traffic to a product page, but if you are, um, every kind of thing in our kind of blueprint will will talk to any type of page. It, it's it's a uh, it's uh, almost like. Um, a Scientology. It's it's a, it's a way of uh, conversion persuasion that people um, you ha you get into their mind. So, a couple of quick things, um, and I feel that most importantly, going back to your kind of what most important number two, uh, we we kind of worship the Ada principle. Now, I'm sure Justin, you've probably heard of the Ada principle. A lot of people uh, on this stream would have heard of the Ada principle. I'm not going to do it justice on this stream. Go and Google it. It's A I D A but I'll just quickly run you through it. Um, and on product pages, we see this works the best. So ADA stands for attention, interest, desire, action. 
and this is basically the flow of your of your page and this is how it should follow now how do we do this attention so above the fold we clearly get their attention whether it's I'm, I'm speaking whether it's a product page a lambda it doesn't matter that you specifically ask about product pages we get their attention so we have a really nice image of the product we have a clear call to action headline so the headline says about the product we've got a supporting headline and we've got bullet points um, that kind of support those two those two headlines when it comes to copy just to jump in and i'm sorry i'm going between things but when it comes to copy and content you really want to focus on benefits over features so everyone and i i've been guilty of it anyone who has a product is so proud of their product or their service that they want to get real kind of geeky and real technical about it and bang on about these features you know my product does this it's got the xyz of this it's got the one two three of this but they kind of forget what it does for the client and that's what you really need to do you need to put yourself in the mind of the consumer and think about how is this going to benefit the people coming to my page how is it going to make their life easier how is it going to change their life why would they want to buy it so when it comes to copy we'll go into that in more detail if you want after but on these headlines and stuff don't talk about benefit uh, don't talk about features talk about benefits and there's a little uh, this is one of my favorite little things there's a little case study two pages identical landing pages right both selling a uh, a camera phone now, one of them says, get this amazing 12 megapixel super zoom, blah, 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 camera phone. The other one says, take long lasting pictures of your family that will last forever. And that second one converts so much better than the one that's banging on about the features. So that's just a little bit. So we get their attention. Next section is interest. How do we do that? Well, that's where we talk about these benefits over features. How simple is it you to use this product for the consumer? Normally we do that with like a one, two, three step thing. It's like, this will change your life. It's as easy as one, two, three. One, buy this you know, discounted product. Two, easily use it. Three, see the results. So it's like a one, two, three. Repeat their interest with showing them how they can use this product. Bang, number three is desire. So Ada, attention, interest, desire. Desire, how do we show desire? Well, it's crucial these days. It's social proof, case studies, testimonials, videos. Um, so we want lots of organic testimonials and, and, and social proof. Forget stock images, forget um, you know shitty testimonials that are clearly just made up and written by you. You want organic stuff. I mean, it sounds crazy, but sometimes it's actually quite good to have a negative within a positive. So like, I love this. I love this mega, uh, this camera phone. I didn't really like the noise it made, but it took the best pictures ever and I love it. Like, make them believable, make them real. Right. Social proof is crucial. And then last but not least, it's action. So on your product page, we're going down the flow. You need a, a very clear and strong call to action. What's the one clearest action? Don't confuse it. You don't want like bundles and stuff in good, but you don't want mixed messages, mixed call to actions. What is that one clear action? Add the cart, buy now, whatever it may be, give them that one clearest action. So whether that's a product page or a sales page, mm -hmm. um, it, it follow that Ada principle uh, and that will, will have a, a really big effect. It's second to page feed. What about as far as things like uh, color, the add the cart button, add the cart button above the fold, things of that nature? Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that That's a given. So on that old product pages, obviously you have like a product select and a an amount and an add to cart definitely have that above the fold on the product if we're talking product pages 100 percent um the other thing you want above the fold is at least one testimonial so in your product description if you're going to drive traffic to a product page just edit that description at the very bottom put like one testimonial with five green stars or five gold stars um because people uh, straight away assume that that's social proof associate with it um they don't have to yes the desire section is, is further down and it's crucial but it's paramount that you have a, a at least one testimonial above the fold on any landing page you're driving traffic to. Again, that's just a really quick thing that anyone watching this video, if they don't have a testimonial above the fold right now, just add it and add five colored stars. Just five colored stars and a testimonial. Make sure your testimonial has a supporting image so it's real, it's authentic, you've got a picture of a person. Again, avoid stock images. Even if you've got to get your mate to do a selfie on his phone, that's more believable than, than like a, a kind of stock image. So, yeah. Right. Uh, what, um, if you want to message me even like in, in, 
I, I put you on the spot. I should probably want to. Do you have a store that we can look at that you've created? We can look at a product page and I can share my screen and pull it up and we can go through it. Um, let me try and pull one up and match it in my phone. I have one. Oh, I know of a client, but I don't want to put them on the spot. I'll message you alone. And... I mean, I'm kind of the same, but I can probably pull up. Uh, I can see if we can find Tim's pages that we did for his when we uh, we kind of did our, our kind of um, deal with Tim. So let me see if I can just find them one sec. There's the one I'm thinking of, but I did just send me one. Dude. I don't want to put him on the spot without asking permission. To probably where would I see this? Sorry, you just messaged. Uh, me? I sent it to you in Messenger, Facebook Messenger. On Facebook, cool. Yeah. Two sets, guys. Let me just go and grab that. That's the nice thing about the software; we can share screens and pull stuff up. And ah, right, cool. Very nice. If anyone has questions, by the way, feel free to uh, chat. Yeah, I'm um, happy to answer. Uh, so a B testing, like what, what do you recommend? Obviously there's things like Google optimize, which is free and BWO. Do you guys have an AB tester that you recommend? Better than I mean, we're kind of old school in that sense because we've, we've learned with and from Tim and Tim's always sw sworn by BWO and so have we, um, sure. so it's, we have a, we have a direct relationship with them now. We have a kind of VIP, um, onboarding. So if anyone does want an intro, feel free to reach out. Um, I don't think the software is the crucial bit. I think it's how you actually do the A-B testing that's more important. Um, yeah. And for me, um, I, I saw someone comment actually on, uh, on, on the post when you announced it in AdLeaks, um, and, and someone asked, you know, what is a good level of traffic to start doing multivariate testing? Um, and I, we, you know, just to be full, fully transparent, we personally don't drive traffic. That's not what we do. We focus on CRO and landing pages. Um, we're not trying to be the best of all things, you know, we'll leave that to you guys. But um, from our experience with our clients walking hand in hand, um, it doesn't really matter about the, the traffic volume. It's more about how you multivariate test. Mm -hmm. So if you start setting up 20 different multivariate tests and you're only getting, say, 100 clicks per day, you're actually not going to get much data and much of a, of a kind of, um, of a result. So we always suggest to start small, start with one element um, and get enough data to prove that that element, and you know, normally that's a thousand plus clicks, if not probably way more realistically, but just give your data long enough to, to kind of gather. Don't mm -hmm. go in and do 20 different things at once. So start with one element, whether that's the color of the button, the call to action text, the hero image, supporting video. Um, one little cool thing, cool little tip is emojis on buttons. They're really working right now, so definitely split test them. Um, let me just try and pull up this URL for you two seconds. Can we mask the URL, by the way? Well, can you hide that on there? Yeah. Cool, give me two seconds. I'll pull one up. Um, do, 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 do. Go on here. And you kind of cover the next one, how much data is considered. Sorry, that one already actually if the one is not prepared to get a self-host custom built landing page so yeah like there's a lot of questions about this and it's a lot of it's centered around shopify actually but if people are just starting out and obviously like they need to use a landing page builder yeah um i know there's click funnels which i personally hate um <laughs> biggest piece of crap ever I they're think we're gonna be good friends <laughs> what that i think we're gonna be good friends yeah, I, I, I fucking hate it. Shogun and Zipify um, are other ones that are out there. Um, which one do you guys recommend? So, so like, the, the, the thing with page builders is, is kind of like what me and you've just discussed. Um, they, they'll, the page builders are no different. If, in fact, they're worse than Shopify for adding load speed. Um, so ClickFunnels, for example, I mean, I don't hate it as much as you do, but it serves a purpose, definitely, and it serves a purpose for people without budget who can't afford services like us, for example. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, that's, that's you know up to you, but they serve a purpose for proving a concept, but when you've proven a concept or you prove something can sell or convert, that's when you need to take it to the next level. And I'm not saying you need to come to us, but you need to then take it out of a page builder or Shopify because that load speed and that kind of you're put in a box. There's only so much things you can do. It, it's killing you, um, and it's you're not going to get the same results. So, do I recommend page builders? No, not at all. Are they good? Yes, I believe they're good for people who can't afford to get custom and to prove concepts. But once you've proven a concept and you've got something that's making money, like 
don't go and like don't go away for a weekend or get the new Lambo. Put some money in actually building a decent funnel out and, and landing page, and you'll it'll, you'll reap the rewards for it. So stay away from them when you've proven the concept. Do you as have far as Shopify? Sorry, do you have one that you recommend over the other, or uh, no, no, they're all. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, to pick, to be fair to Convertry, I don't know if you've heard of it, but Convertry um, they focus on low speeds. So if I was going to pick one, I'd probably say Convertry and some. Never some, even heard of it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a UK company. They're a good guy, really good guys. Guy called Andrew, um, who I know and uh, have met. Um, you know, I, you still get better results going outside of it, but Convertry is is, is, is like page speed um, optimized, which is good as far as you know builders go. When is it comes to Shopify, Shopify, sorry, my friend. Uh, no, that's 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 like a standalone page builder. Okay. Um, when it comes to Shopify, if you want to use a page builder, Zipify, um, Token, Carthook. Carthook's really good, but you need a bigger budget for Carthook. But that's a new one, and it's really really good. Um, but those two are probably the go-to's. But again, they're, they're not going to, you know, be consistent with. Um, right. Let me send this link. Sorry. Um, so these pages are. The pages we did in partnership with Tim. Sorry, my Facebook seems to just crash. No, you're fine. Uh, let's keep going here. Yeah, we have more questions. Um, yeah, in. so uh, we use Zipify pages if anybody wants to. No, obviously we. Uh, what are some of your best tips or low hanging fruit for WordPress WooCommerce owners? Sure. So the benefit of WordPress and WooCom is you can. I just sent you a sales page. I don't have the checkout link handy, but if you can pull that up and master URL, we can definitely go through that. Um, so as far as WooCom uh, goes, WooCom. The, the good thing about WooCom um, over Shopify is that you can custom. Uh, design and develop the whole funnel. So you can custom design and develop the checkout, uh, the cart page, so you have full control over the whole funnel. Uh, whereas Shopify, you can't obviously custom check out the, uh, custom develop the, the checkout. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a really good thing about using WooCom. So what I would recommend is that you do that um, and you utilize things like payment seals, trust seals. Um, so for example, on your checkout page, you have all the processing seals that you, you you take, whether it's PayPal, Mastercard, whatever you take, Annex, because um, all these things do is instill trust in your in your checkout. Um, you can also put things like countdown timers on there, um, but split test that because sometimes they can have negative effects. Uh, trust seals, so things like um, SSLs, secure seals, payment secure seals, money back guarantee seals, all these kind of things on checkout really work. Um, but as far as WooCom itself, it's no different to uh, it's no different to Shopify to a custom landing page. It's all about those principles. So Ada principle, keep it simple, stupid principles, um, page speed optimization. Just still make sure that you can you can uh, optimize your pages and, and things like that. Yep. So here's kind of the page. Yeah. So this is basically a uh, this is one of Tim's landing pages. So we about four or five months ago, they're still available. Um, Justin, I'm sure you can make them uh, available in the group if Tim agrees that we can kind of sell these again. But basically, we did a, uh, a kind of partnership with Tim where we packaged up all of his uh, previous kind of high converting templates um, and sold them to the group. It was called Landing Page Legends. Since then, people have bought these, you know, six months ago and seen incredible results, which is great because they're super optimized. They follow all the right principles. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, they're kind of dummy. So, They've got all the right principles, but you can convert them into any of your products so, um, and go from there. So I'm happy to, to kind of go through this page. If you like. So how, do, how does this work with, let's say, a lot of the clients I have, you know, are real big brands. They don't have one product that they sell or they don't push one product. Let's take Lululemon, for example. Yeah. You have hundreds of products. How are you, when you say you don't use product pages, how are you incorporating this practice into a mega brand or a brand that has, you know, boutiques online that are selling hundreds and hundreds, especially when they have high churn, they only yeah. buy and they go out of stock. What's the strategy based around that? Yeah. So, so, so my, my experience with that is that everyone likes making money, 
right? So the, the lot, the most of clients that we work with, they don't care if they make money from one product or a hundred products. True. So focus on your core products. So not everyone, and I understand, not everyone has the, uh, you know, the, the capability or space to create, say, for example, a hundred different unique sales pages because they've got a hundred different products, but pick your top five uh, and let's start creating sales pages for them. You know, I doubt anyone or any one of your customers, maybe they do, maybe I'm wrong, like I said, I didn't do the traffic side of things, but I doubt any of your customers who have, say, for example, a hundred products drive traffic to a hundred product pages. They probably focus on, say, five to ten of their top selling products. Am I right? Do, like for like some of our big ones, to be honest, we don't use a lot of landing pages um, only because most of ours are big e-com companies or like for lead gen we do. But mm -hmm. on the big e-com, you know, like we have a let's take a big jewelry store, for example, that has fifteen hundred products. You know, we'll do carousels and we'll send yeah. them with carousel right to the product page or we'll do to so, a so, so if i was talking to you as an agency or to someone uh who, who who was running traffic to their own store in that sense what i would suggest is that it would be worth trying taking your top one to, or three converting products that are selling the most on your current ads mm -hmm. and building out dedicated sales pages for them and seeing the results Yep. Because I'm 99% confident you'll get better results. Yep. And then you can just focus on them. We've done it recently with, with quite a few companies. Um, I can't mention names, but we've done one with a, a, a very large um, drinks company. And they sell lots of uh, kind of like refuel, recharge, re-energize these kind of uh, drinks. And they have quite a long, large product range. And they were doing similar. They were doing carousel. They were selling to individual product pages. And we said to them, look, let's pick the top three uh, selling refuel, re-energize, wake up, whatever they are, nutrient drinks, and let's build dedicated sales pages for these three individually. So let's not confuse it. Let's keep right. it simple, stupid. Let's go one product, one product, one product, and drive traffic to them. And they saw an, an increase in conversion rates when they focused just on these three sales pages, and they just put all their spend into that. Yeah. And now what we're doing is just refreshing the, the creative every two, three months. So just so people kind of get an idea, like this landing page that we're looking for for Tim. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Yeah. Um, I did share it, but it's I'll... on the screen, so I can't see it on mine. But oh, I, I had it on the screen. I, I took it back down. What does something like this cost to like build? When people think custom, and even when I think custom, you know, you think, oh God, we're getting into a darkless hole, money pit that you're never going to be dig be able to dig out of. So like, if, if you were to create something like this, not exactly yeah. by package you but create something based around kind of what we've been discussing what does something like this cost yeah of course so first and foremost as i've heard i'm not here to set but I, I, you know i understand your question people want to know so if you were to come to us for example as a company um and you wanted to take your product or products um let's say for example one sales page like this Yep. Uh, integrated in for into most people do Shopify, they can do it into WooCommerce, Shopify, Limelight, Connective, whatever CRM you're using. Um, a one page like this, integration to the checkout and confirmation, um, you're looking at roughly around about the 1700 US mark. Um, we also offer uh, variant packages. Um, so we do like a three or a five variant package where, for example, it's going to work out cheaper if you have lots of products and you want to pick your top three or five, we're not going to charge you 1700 every time you want a new lander. Uh, we can do a variant package and anyone can obviously get in touch with me after this and I'll get my sales guy with you. But um, that's for design code and full integration. So into your store uh, and dynamically as well. So you can edit it on the back end if you want, switch out the images, text code on Shopify. Um, so it's kind of like a one-stop shop. We, we kind of do everything. All we need is your product and your product details, yep. um, and we will provide you a go-to page that's ready for traffic, basically. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me pull up the rest of these. I got so many tabs open. Mm -hmm. I lost my questions. Hold on.
I'm used to having one tab open now for this live stuff. I got to have like, new software, right? Yeah. You have like 17 open. <laughs> and then it takes like 45 minutes to prep all these streams. <laughs> You're doing a good job, my friend. You're doing a very good job. All right. So here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. So uh, this is really a good one. Um, product price testing. Yeah. Obviously, Google has been cracking down on redirects. And even now, a lot of our reps are saying not to use um, shortener links anymore, even though they're not against terms of service. Um, I think eventually they probably will make a big stickler about it. But mm. you know, our, our reps even say, you know, try to avoid using Bitly and all that stuff just because it's easily manipulatable just to swap. You know, obviously, Facebook knows they're not stupid that you can swap and, and do redirects and stuff like that a lot easier. Um, how are you guys testing product prices? Yeah, I, I mean, as far as the, the traffic side of things, I think that's more maybe a question for you. Uh, but as far as the, the landing page and, and the, the page side of things, it's, it's very simple when you build these sales pages to have two or three versions mm -hmm. with two or three different URLs. So you would just, I guess, on the outside, you would just do the ads and send them to different pages um, at different price points. And then you can just use buy buttons that link to different product pricing. You can even do it on the lander where you have like different prices um, for like bundles and stuff, especially if you use something like cart hook, look, look, at, look up cart hook, it's a really good fit kit. Um, and again, if people want an intro, we've got like VIP um, uh, kind of onboarding over there as well. So just let me know. But yeah, as far as the traffic side and the URL side, like I say, we, we just focus on what we know we're very good at and that's not traffic. So I'm not gonna pretend here and that's a question that, that um, I don't know the answer to on the ad side of things. Yeah, and that, to be honest, that's what we use. That's what we would use is uh, not Google Optimize, VWO. I guess yeah. we do a lot of, to be honest, we don't do a lot of product price testing um, because most of the brands that we work with are established and they're not you know new up and coming and most of the companies know their margins and so they're kind of have their set prices. But if I was to do it, it would be Google Optimize and, and or VWO. Um, just make sure when you're doing that, if you're, if you're creating multiple product pages, to make sure you're setting no index, uh, no index on the product pages so you're not having duplicate content pages. And the one thing shitty about Shopify is if you create a second, secondary product page, my understanding, and maybe you know, is there's no way to actually hide that from the search bar. So if you go out and you test 10 different things and the search bars are pretty much one of the most predominantly things used and they type in a product. It's gonna like them all right. Yeah, and I would say, I, if I was to look at that, I would be like, well, what the hell, they have all these same products at different prices. So to be honest with you, the real way to do it is EWO, but it's very expensive and you do have to have some, probably not for a price, product price change as much, but you do need some coding background to use VWO. It's a little more difficult, so. Hmm. That would be or, nice. or, or duplicate your lander if you have a sales lander. Yeah, so again, that's a more expensive way because you have to yep. get a sales lander built. But. Um, so here's a really good question from Gil. Yeah, David, and I kind of like put it in for average conversion rates on you. And I'm I'm more interested on the non typical landers, but like, what are your average ecom conversion rates you see when coming in on typical ecom stores? And then what it is like maybe with lead gen, and then what you yeah. see, like add to cart versus add to cart to purchase, like what those drop off rates are. Yeah, okay. So uh, the first thing to, to say is to be again, very transparent is that everything depends on your product and traffic quality. Um, it, it's very dependent on the traffic you're driving. It's very dependent on the page you're, you're taking, driving your traffic to. Um, but I can, what I can tell you is in our experience, when people come to us, what conversion rates they see, and then when they've used us, what kind of conversion rates we're hitting. Um, when it comes to e-com, first and foremost, a lot of people will even get under 1% when they come to us, conversion rates. Um, the average we see from when people come to us is around about the 2% mark, uh, 2 to 3%. Um, what we like to do is take them to 3 and above. Um, sometimes that can be as much as you know, 5, 6, 7. Uh, but normally we're seeing around about the 4, 5, 6 points. Um, you can obviously get higher than that, but it's, it's, it depends again on the product, the price, the traffic quality. Um, but normally when people come to us, they're, they're roughly getting around about anywhere between 0.5 and 2% on cold traffic. Yeah. Um, when it comes to lead generation, 
it's again completely dependent on the niche and the traffic. So for example, something like a financial lead um, is going to be way harder to obtain than uh, something that's, that's just short form um, and, and uh, an easier kind of uh, form to fill out. So lead gens is, 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 is very up and down depending on the, on the, the kind of offer or, or vertical that you're in. But a financial lead, you're looking at around about the more towards the 10% and then anything else that's kind of not long form um, mm -hmm. you're looking at around about up to sort of 20, 25, as, as big as 30, 35 you know, we've seen. Um, but it depends how you do it. Um, you know, there's ways of doing it. Lead gen's a completely different kettle of fish and it's something that we're, you know, I like to say we're pretty good at. Um, Tim, we've done so much lead gen with Tim. Um, not many people will know this, but when Tim, you know, probably five, six years ago, was in this space, um, maybe before a lot of us, he was doing huge, huge volume on lead gen and he was doing a lot of debt lead gen, a lot of student loan lead gen. Um, and we, we built all the standards then with, with really, really good results. So Got it. yeah, it, it kind of depends. Uh, it's, it's such a hard question and it's, it's one of the questions I'd love to be able to answer because obviously our job, our, our company runs on conversion rates. That, that's what we're known for. That's what we get business for. People don't come back. We wouldn't be doing this for six years if our pages didn't convert. But to pluck a, a figure out the air when I don't know your traffic quality, I don't know your product, I don't know mm. your, it, it's just impossible. All we can do, and this is all I have to say on, on calls to, to potential clients, it's like all we can do is guarantee you the best possible starting point. But of course, even then, you've got to split test, you've got to multivariate test if, if you want to push these, these kind of numbers up and up and up. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, kind of winding down here. Is there anything sure. that you kind of feel is kind of, kind of that we missed that? Yeah, I'll give a couple of golden nuggets. That's cool. Yeah. Um. So, so a couple of new things that we're doing. Um. Just to share with you, uh, that you can do on your landers, and, and these are a couple of things that uh we first started doing probably around about six months ago that having great results. Um. I'll give you two or three. So one is, I mentioned it earlier, and it sounds ridiculous, but it's the generation we live in, is emojis are working. So emojis on buttons are really working. Um, I pushed this in a group that we, we have on, on Facebook earlier this week, and we've already seen people comment and say, Shit, yeah, I just added an emoji, and I'm seeing like an uplift in the carts and CTR, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but it works. So little things like um, pointing finger works very well, uh, rush my order with a clock works very well, um, contact us now with a calendar works really well. Just just think logically, what is my call to action? What is the emoji that's gonna fit with it? Split test it. Uh, gold and green buttons are working very well right now, so, so split test them. Um, another good thing is fixed uh, CTA on mobile. So when you're on a mobile, especially, I mean, it works on lead gen, it works on editorial, it works on sales pages, but especially on sales pages, fix a call to action at the bottom of the screen. So you imagine, uh, I've got my screen here, so let me just hide that. Got my screen here I'm on my landing page. Here would be a fixed button wherever I scroll down the page with your CTA. So yeah. don't get them looking for that fixed button, just have it fixed at all times, whether that's add the cart or whether that's submit form, whether that's click through, click here, it doesn't matter. Um, fix a button on mobile. Yeah. Um, another few quick things just to, just to bang some out before we end the call. I know you've got to go shortly. Um, just to hopefully get some value. Cross-browser um, compatibility is a big one. Make sure you check uh, your cross-browser compatibility. Have a look on browser stacks. Um, just Google cross-browser check um, because sometimes uh, you can look at something on Chrome and it looks amazing, but when you look at it on Safari, it looks like a piece of shit or your form's missing yeah. or your buy button's missing. That's a real crucial one. Page speed is everything. Um, Ada principle, look it up. Kiss, look it up. Keep it simple, stupid. Make sure you have zero distractions, no traffic leaks. People say, oh, you know, but I've got a million people on Facebook. We've got to put a, a page on there, a page link on there. Rubbish, no. You can have it, but have it statically. Just have it as an image. Don't make it clickable. Uh, privacy terms, contact us. Don't have them external pages. Have them in modal pop-outs. Don't take anyone away from that landing page. And the best, best, I promise you, the best results you'll see is not driving traffic to a product page. Drive it to a dedicated sales landing page straight to your cart. Got it. Sounds good. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Awesome. I know you are 
Yeah, if you have like some like maybe like best practice sheets or whatever, I'm sure um, people will ask questions. So obviously, just watch all the different um, you know channels. Yeah, I, I guess you'll be putting this in the in the group. So I'm, yeah, gonna, it, I'm it should I'm be active in there. and uh, people can just yeah. start me in on. So that's fun. Okay. It live stream in there, so it should already yeah. be in there. So we'll, I'm sure we'll start seeing people asking questions. So cool. just watch out for that. And then if you have like that best practice top 10 or top 20 feet and you want to just drop it in there or whatever. Yeah, I can drop the uh, the talk as a video as well from Affiliate World um, on the Econ top 10 commandments. Mm -hmm. so we've covered a few of them on the school, but um, hopefully there'll be some more value in that. More than happy yeah, to share that. Put, that, um, put that in gold and platinum. Yeah, absolutely. Just gold and LED, LED. Uh, I'll send you a link in a minute as well and you can distribute it if okay. you need to, but yeah, that's not a problem at all. Okay, cool. That sounds good, man. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, Looking forward to working on some things here in the future with you and with Tim. So thanks for your time, brother. I appreciate it. No, I really appreciate it, Justin. You're killing the groups. And uh, yeah, I appreciate everything you're doing as well. It's um, it's, it's a real great community to be part of. So uh, anything we can do to help you and Tim, we'll do it. Yeah. And if people, I know a lot of people, it's just, it's kind of funny and like it's mind mind boggling. A lot of people in Facebook ad buyers still don't know that <laughs> at least exists. And I, right. It's, it's crazy, but if you are yeah, go, go and join buyers. now. Honestly, it's it's like uh, ad buyers on crack. Honestly, you, it's it's ten x ad buyers. Um, and don't take us the wrong way, but the best thing about it is that it's it's quite a small community, so you're actually getting way more attention. Um, Tim's in there helping everything, everyone. Um, I personally co well, you know, been invited and spoke at three of Tim's masterminds as well, and they're they're ridiculous. Um, everyone walks away with um. Some gold nuggets. One thing you could uh, could uh, you know ten x your 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 campaigns. So um yeah, can't can't um, recommend you guys yeah. and Leeds and Tim enough. Most people probably in ad buyers. I don't know if they make it to the end of this video, but if you do make it to the end of this video and you're an ad buyers, give you like a little bit of just kind of look at what's in here. You get all kinds of deals on different memberships. We have that as well, by the way, guys. So if you if you uh, if you want to contact me, um, sorry to interrupt. If you want to contact me, we give. Any AdLeaks members, 20% um, off any projects you do with us. So just quote AdLeaks when you contact us. If you're a member, I'll check with Justin and you'll get 20% off. Yeah, and this these are all just units and full of posts of top level, not only Facebook strategy, but everything from Snapchat strategy to basically every traffic source, Google Ads. We're starting a Google training course actually that starts here in you know five minutes that I'm actually going to take for like eight to 12 weeks. We'll see, we'll see how far. Never done a live training. You're a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, like live training on starting Google from A to Z. So there's a lot of stuff in there and I'm not telling you this just because we want your money, but um, at least Platinum, we do want your money. But for what you put in there, if you ask anybody in the community, um, you're gonna, you'll have your ROI back within two weeks. I think it's what, like ninety nine dollars a month. Yeah, it's yeah. nothing if you're spending. I mean, all, all you need to do is make one sale on your econ store, and you make your money back, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, it's, it's crazy how much knowledge is in there, and people in there like like myself, like Tim. You know, you can ask Tim direct questions. You can ask him CRO questions. You can ask experts in there that spend over millions of dollars a month so it's very 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 well worth it if you haven't checked about checked it out and don't know of it highly suggest it um definitely definitely uh worth the money so well, i appreciate it, brother i'm gonna jump on this next one and awesome man best of luck and uh, thanks again and yeah it's been a pleasure yeah you too buddy thanks thanks guys cheers yep.